Hi, these are top 10 amazing blender tips that will level up your skills just in 10 minutes. Let's begin. First tips, viewport navigation improvements. Have you ever gotten lost in your blender viewport and tried scrolling around but couldn't find your object? Don't worry, here is the solution. When you've gotten lost in the viewport, simply just press home key to frame all object in the viewport. Pressing the home key will automatically center the view on all visible objects in the viewport and objects that are not visible are not included. However, you can also quickly zoom in on any object by selecting it and pressing numpad period key. This will automatically center the view on the selected object, no matter where the viewport is currently looking. Anyway, there's another similar function to zoom into a selected object by pressing the slash key. But the difference is that it also isolate all unselected objects. This doesn't actually hide them. No matter how many I press Alt-H key to unhide objects, they will not appear up. Even if the visibility icon is toggled on or off, the unselected objects still remaining isolated. You can only bring them back by pressing the slash key again. To get a closer view at a specific area, enter edit mode, select an area, press the grave accent key, and choose view selected to zoom into the selected area of the object. This is worked on selected edge as well. Second tips, selection improvements. Try to avoid inefficient selections as they will waste your time. Instead, do this. When you select some faces and press Ctrl plus numpad plus, the selection will be expand with each click and press Ctrl plus numpad minus to shrink the selection. This will also works with multiple selection and it can be applied to loop selection as well. Let's say I want to select only the white area of the eyes here. The trick is select the loop edge, right click and give it a temporarily mark seams. Then select a face and press Ctrl plus L to select linked faces. This mark seams will define a boundaries between areas and is very useful especially when in the modeling process. When you're done, simply just remove the mark seams. And for lastly, you can quickly repeat a selection pattern by selecting some faces then press shift Control plus numpad plus or numpad minus to repeat the selection pattern. You also can invert the selection by press Control plus I key. Tips number three, bevel improvement. First, let's starting from basic to beveling the edge, you can press Control plus B key. You can scroll up or scroll down the middle mouse button to increase or decrease the segments. While in beveling, you can press P key then move the cursor to change bevel section direction. At the bevel menu, you can adjust the segments count one more time here. Sometimes, when beveling multiple edges at once, you may encounter cases where the edges is overlapping. To fix this, it's simply just enable the clamp overlap option here. This will keep the edges from crossing over each other. Let's undo the action and try beveling one more time. I will increase the segment count and at the bottom menu, select the custom option. This will open a curve that allows you to freely adjust the bevel shape. This curve is a representation of the bevel shape. And if you want to start over, you can just click here and select reset curve. Tips number four, easy circle shape. Here's the easiest way to create a circle shape. First, go to edit, open preferences on add and tab, Search for Loop Tool, then enable the add-in. This add-in is free and comes with Blender itself. Here is some effective ways to use this tool. Typically, when creating an arm base, we start with a circle shape. To shape it into a circle, select the faces, right-click, choose Loop Tools, and then select Circle. This will automatically transform the selected faces into a circle shape, allowing you to proceed with modeling the arm and hand. You can also use loop tools to create the initial shape for the foot. The circle's detail level is determined by the number of edges. More edges will create a smoother, more detailed circle. This loop tools can also be applied to multiple selections. Go to pivot point menu. With this individual origin selected, it will allow you risk scale each circle independently. Tips number five. Edge loop cut improvements. Let's begin by paying more attention to this top line here and this bottom line. Press Ctrl plus R key 
to create a loop cut. As you can see here, currently, the line is aligned relative to the top or the bottom line. However, if I press E key, it will align with either the top or bottom line. In this case, it's aligned with the top line. If you want to change the alignment direction, just press the F key to flip the alignment direction. And by pressing the Escape key, it will precisely center the line between the two edges. This E key and F key features is not only work it when adding a new loop cut, it applied to existing loop edges as well. As bonus tips, normally, when pressing G key twice on an edge, the edge will slide it, but it cannot cross over the edge border. To allow it to cross over, just press C key while sliding the edge. Tips number six, faces extrude improvements. Normally, you can press E key to do standard extrude on every single face selection without any problem occur. However, if you try to extrude multiple faces at once, you'll notice that the results are not as expected and then make it more difficult to manage. For better results, use Alt plus E key instead and choose extrude faces along normals. As the result, it works much better because it extrudes based on the face normals. We can repeatedly use the extrude faces along normals if you want. Go to pivot point menu here, choose individual origins option. It allow us to scale and rotate each selection individually. You can also enable proportional editing as well. Scroll up or down the mouse wheel to change the proportional editing influence radius. Lastly, I select some nearby faces and extrude them using standard E key. And for the other one, I use Alt plus E key and choose extrude individual faces. You can understand the difference by looking at the results. Tips number seven, edge and vertex extrude improvements. Select an edge, press E key, and this is a standard extrude. For more advanced, press control and right click and it will automatically extrude to the mouse cursor position. This is simplest way to start a vertex extrusion. Just use a cube, press M key and select at center to merge them as single one vertex point. Press E key to extrude the vertex freely. Vertex extrusion is very effective for creating long type object, started by only one vertex. Vertex extrusion. Object mode. Right click and convert it to the curve. At object data properties tab, adjust the depth value to give it a volume. You can scale individual curve point by pressing Alt plus S. Adjust it and in the end convert it back to mesh for ready to use. Tips number eight. Polygon masking. Currently, these mesh is looking good without the subdivide modifier. Let's add subdivide modifier into the mesh. As a result, there is overlapping occurs, as you can see here. You might think to solve this by deleting the overlapping parts. Please, don't do this. Instead, try this. Select all the faces that should not be visible. Create new vertex group. Click assign. We can rename it. Switch to object mode. Add mask modifier. Choose the vertex group we just created. Click invert here. The overlapping issue is now resolved. The hidden faces can be unmasked and used again at any time. And the overlapping faces is no longer visible. Tips number nine. Apply modifier with shape key. In Blender, we cannot directly apply a modifier to a mesh with shape keys. This mesh contains shape keys for creating an open mouth animation. Let's say I want to apply this mirror modifier to this model, but I don't want to lose the shape keys as well. Here is the trick. Duplicate the mesh by pressing Shift plus D. At the original mesh, delete all the shape keys. Apply the mirror modifier. At the duplicated mesh, apply all shape keys. Apply the mirror modifier as well. Now, select the duplicate mesh. Shift select the original mesh. Go to Shape Key menu. Choose Join as Shapes. Delete the duplicate mesh. Now, the mirror modifier has been applied to the mesh while still preserving the shape keys. Final tips. Origin. It's important to have origin of each mesh correctly. In this case, the origin is at the top of the hair strand and it will make future modifications more efficient. However, the origin of this hair strand is not correctly, making it difficult to manage. I'll show you two ways how to moving the origin to this position. First, switch to edit mode. 
Use Vertex Selection Mode. Select the vertex where you want the new origin to be. Press Shift plus S. Choose Cursor to Selected. Back to Object Mode. Right-click, Set Origin, Choose Origin to 3D Cursor. Now, the origin has been fixed. And for second way, go to Option here. Enable Origins option. Move the origin point to the desired location. Once done, disable the origin option. That's all for today. I hope this is useful to you. See you in the next content. Thank you for watching.